This has been in the making for quite a long time, several months at least, with tons of different ideas regarding how to handle something as massive as, well, the largest mod available for the game Starbound. Er, well, it's more a mod pack that bills itself as a complete overhaul. Think something like the Feed the Beast mod packs for Minecraft, if you know what those are. Just roll into one mod. Regardless, tons of research went into this, leading to me seeing both the best and worst that a video game's modding community can offer. I had tons of debates with myself, questioning whether everything was worth the trouble, if I should even go ahead with this lest I risk spreading old bad feelings, inflaming years old controversies, and as a result bringing some mod developers and their supporters to my doorstep, packing not so merry moods. But, you know... There are things that need to be said, positive and negative alike, about Starbound's largest, most notable, and perhaps most infamous mod. Things that you probably didn't even know were or are things. So, at long last, this is my mod showcase about Fracken Universe. The original version of this video was meant to be a deep dive into Fracken Universe instead of me offering general thoughts and opinions about it. It would have involved a full playthrough, discussion of all the mechanics FU adds to Starbound, going into its history and things like how once upon a time it was called Fracken Flora, and mentions of drama. Tons of ugly, ugly drama. The more I worked on it, the more I felt like I'd do nothing but reignite bad feelings from years gone by, even if such necro-pyromancy had good intentions, namely creating a central source of information dedicated to FU drama and promoting civil discussion of that. While planning this content, I realized I could have limited my scope to just FU itself, leave out all the drama, and be safe. However, I felt like it would be stupid for me to not at least mention that. Don't get me wrong, I feel like more people within the Starbound community need to know about these things. I just... Yeah, I got to the point where I told myself, you'll get into some serious shit if you go ahead with this. No joke, over half of the original video wound up being about FU drama. And this is not a drama channel, rants about Patreon notwithstanding. It never was, and it never will be. Besides, there's a good possibility that if I made this content in the way I originally planned it, the reaction I'd get would simply be, who cares? But, since I figure a good number of you want me to give you an appetizer or two, or three, well, here I go, into the void, for good or ill, to dig up some controversies that have surrounded Fracken Universe over the years. Stolen content from other Starbound mods, if not mods in their entirety, is or was one of FU's biggest problems. That rabbit hole goes so incredibly deep, you'll even find stolen music here and there, though I've heard much of this has been corrected. There's also the FU developer team policing other Starbound mods, specifically ones that made FU quote-unquote unbalanced, and laughing in the faces of people who hated the changes that spawned those mods. Then there's Sater. Sater is FU's lead developer. He's rather notorious within the Starbound community, and that's putting things lightly. Not to write novels here, but he's known for things like bullying other mod creators, getting his supporters to bully other mod creators and downvote anything critical of FU on places like Reddit, and generally being arrogant and an asshole. During my research, I even found a Tumblr post accusing him of being transphobic based off a comment he posted on Reddit once. To be crystal clear on this point, I'm not saying he is transphobic, and I've heard that FU's developer team includes a number of trans people. I've also heard other people say that Sator is just fine, an okay person to talk to, Someone who, you could argue, doesn't deserve much of the criticism you see from a ton of places. That aside, I warned you. FU's controversies tend to be so, so ugly. Ugly, messy, and complicated. Lots of mudslinging and finger-pointing in comment sections and forum threads. Stuff that, in some cases, might not even be true. 
I don't know every detail of every single ounce of drama that surrounded F.U. and Sater over the years, and that's for the best. I've also never talked with Sater or any of the F.U. developer team. I've no doubt I've gotten things wrong here, even while doing my best to summarize things. However, there is no simple way to sum up everything without ballooning this video to crazy lengths, and I know I have left a ton on the table. Before I continue on to discuss some of Fracken Universe's mechanics and my thoughts on them, I need to note that I typically play Starbound in a pseudo-creative mode, using mods that create NPCs and such. I keep admin mode on and spawn in whatever items I need for, say, something I'm building. Planets and biomes become little more than backdrops for these buildings or for stuff like my story videos. Thus, elements like the polarizing research system don't matter to me often. At least regarding how you're intended to use them in regular gameplay, if that makes sense. However, I did start a more proper run for the purposes of this video. It's what you've been watching throughout, and I felt it helped me form more concrete and better rounded opinions on some of FU's mechanics. It's not all encompassing though, and I know I will be leaving out some things that FU adds and or changes. That's because I don't know those elements of FU as well as something like the research system. And because of that, I can't comment much about them, if at all. Keep this in mind as I go on. Brushing all that drama and all those caveats aside, Fracken Universe has... problems. For instance, lots of dark, juvenile, and edgy humor that's not for everyone, including a food item that's literally a fetus in a jar. Half-hearted attempts at bringing back Starbound's lore from its beta days, itself much grimmer and darker than what the 1.0 update brought to the table. Lovecraftian elements that don't always mesh well with other parts of FU, let alone the base game. An increased emphasis on grinding resources and a more linear progression. A grind and progression that can get seriously tedious and time-consuming. Questionable balance changes that spawned entire mods changing things back to the way they were before code inside FU that disables said mods, if installed, because they made things unbalanced. Questionable compatibility with other mods, forcing players to see if one or more mods they like using will break FU, or vice versa. Intentional incompatibility with certain mods just because FU's devs don't like those mods. A research system that is utterly polarizing, at least from what I've seen. And wow do I need to talk about the research system. Its biggest flaw, in my view, is locking vanilla items and their crafting recipes behind a gate as stuff to be researched. Obviously, in order to research things, you need research points. To get research points, you... stand around and wait for a while. A long while. In real time. Okay, to be fair, there are ways to get research points faster, using computers for instance. And, credit where it's due, it gives players a more definite and visible means of progression without having to look up guides and walkthroughs. Or the FU wiki. Personally, I find that there are aspects of FU more annoying than the research system, like the madness mechanic. Don't get me wrong, it's easy for me to understand how and why people get so frustrated with the research system. It's just, I don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be. At least, I don't dislike the idea, the concept. It has execution flaws, but I can deal with them. Back to that madness mechanic I mentioned. By going to places like Atropus Planets and through doing things like eating brains, you can accumulate madness points. Enough madness points means you can go insane, a debuff that lowers your energy and defense over time. It's not the only debuff that you can get from having enough madness points, and there are ways to mitigate these effects like spending madness on research unlocks, and visiting the Instafroid in the Science Outpost, or getting one yourself. Regardless, going slightly mad is not my preferred experience while playing Starbound, and I find madness pretty annoying whenever it comes up. Unlike with madness, I can't say much about mechanics like charisma, since I almost never find myself in situations where that matters. And charisma isn't that big of a deal to begin with. It's supposed to make trading and selling items a bit more involved and interesting, but this doesn't come into play with random merchant NPCs you'll find on planets, and places like the Vanilla Outpost. 
So, is there anything that Fracken Universe does well? Without much question for me. Within the sheer amount of content it adds are new races, planets, biomes, missions, and um, I can go on forever. Seriously, FU adds a ton of fresh content and changes some of Starbound's mechanics. And I can understand why people get overwhelmed by the amount of content added and changed. It's the reason why these days, I can't recommend FU to players who are new to Starbound. My advice? Definitely get a vanilla run or two in before considering diving into FU. Oh, and if you do decide to dive in, remember to back up your characters and your universe files before you download. About those races. Fracken Universe adds 13 new races, including vanilla's non-playable Fenerox. It also adds different traits to each race, even vanilla races, to give them their own playstyles, positives and negatives alike, being able to survive better while in certain biomes, bonuses when using specific weapon types, being able to eat and not eat certain foods, and again, I can go on forever, but some of these traits were removed from vanilla with the 1.0 update. It's neat to have this mechanic back, if only through mods like this. Obviously, FU isn't the only mod that adds custom races to Starbound. In fact, many of the races FU adds, like the Nitar and the Slimes, were separate mods that got rolled into FU when their original creators abandoned them. And FU's habit of stealing other mods extends to its races, too. A couple, from what I've gathered. Then there are the planets, biomes, and exploring said planets and biomes. Exploration is a huge part of Starbound, if only because of the dumb and repetitive scan-a-bunch-of-random-crap story quests in vanilla and, of course, because of higher-tier planets equaling higher-tier loot. It's nice to see that FU adds so much to this aspect of Starbound, going around and seeing all these new, bizarre planets and biomes, each with their own quirks and hazards to manage, like unknown planets, for instance. Beaming down to what you think is the planet's surface, only to find that you're actually deep underground because Technobabble or whatever. And then you get blasted by a ton of debuffs and die. Unless you don't because you came prepared. Fantastic. What's not so fantastic is that because FU is so grindy, exploration becomes kind of a chore after a while. There's definitely a point where the novelty of seeing all these new planets and biomes wears off and you're stuck with the grind. There's also the fact that some planets and biomes got removed or changed because the resources they once provided made the mod unbalanced. For example, the strange sea planet type was once more random than it is today. You could beam down to a strange sea surface and be greeted by, correct me if I'm wrong here, any liquid in Starbound and what FU has. Some are almost essential for crafting or just in general like liquid Erceus fuel, and healing water, and beer, and poison. Finding a strange sea planet that provided such resources was a challenge because of their rarity, but the reward was immense. It was part of what made exploration kind of fun in FE. Ultimately, strange seas were removed, then added back in, but changed to where they only spawn one main type of liquid, plasmic fluid, which isn't as useful. While I won't get too deep into the controversies that erupted from these changes, know that there are mods that reverse them. Mods that, if installed, may or may not be disabled by code that, itself, may or may not still be part of FU. I couldn't find out if that was indeed removed, but it was a thing not that long ago. People like myself called it stupid and unnecessary, and cue that comment section mudslinging between FU devs and supporters, and people who call these changes dumb. Sulfur sea planets were changed to stop appearing in players' universes altogether for similar reasons, sulfuric acid being another super useful crafting item, but again, mods came along to add them back in. To be fair, there were planet types that got removed for other reasons. Bloodstone was once a planet type that got degraded to a biome type because it was deemed too similar to the Atrobus planet type. Still, FU's exploration was more engaging once upon a time compared to vanilla because of the many planet and biome types it adds, not to mention all the new ores and resources you'll find on those planets. Much of that remains in FU to this day, and listing them all would take forever, so I won't do that. 
Instead, I'll talk about Starbound Steam Workshop for a little while. If you've scanned enough comment sections for Starbound mods on Steam Workshop, you've almost certainly seen this question at least once. Is this compatible with FU? It seems like it's a given that each time a new mod is published, someone will ask that. The truth is, if a mod winds up being incompatible with FU, chances are high that it won't get as much attention as it would otherwise. In addition, there have been instances of other popular mods receiving updates that broke compatibility with FU. This happened to Project Redemption, and as a result, there was a mass exodus of subscribers after that update landed. According to Project Redemption's developer Armok, it took months to regain those lost subscribers after FU compatibility was restored. Then, there are instances of mods being intentionally incompatible with FU for whatever reason. Project Ancient Cosmos comes to mind, and its comment section is littered with tons of people asking, Is this compatible with FU? Is this compatible with FU? Is this compatible with FU? Will there be a patch to make it compatible with FU? Please make it compatible with FU! I'll download if you do! But you need to remember, Fracken Universe remains incredibly popular, even considering all the drama and controversies. As of the time I'm making this, it's the most subscribed mod on Starbound Steam Workshop, with almost 500,000 subscribers. I'm not defending FU here, to be clear. I'm simply stating why these questions, as annoying as they can be frequent, exist. Regardless, if a mod is incompatible with FU, there's a chance its creators made their mod that way. And there's a chance said mod will stay that way. Several years ago, Fracken Universe was an easy recommendation, considered essential to the Starbound experience, and something every Starbound player needed to download and use. But now? There exists other major mods for Starbound that you could consider better alternatives to FU. Arcana, Betabound, and Maple32 to name a few. They're more cohesive, easier to get into for newer players, and in some ways, do the same things FU does, but better. Want racial traits but don't want FU? There's a mod for that. Want Lovecraftian elements that make more sense than what's in FU? There's a mod for that. Don't like how FU handles gun magazines? There's a mod for that. On that note, FFS, Feast of Fire and Smoke, is full of jank but still technically impressive and incredibly unique for a Starbound mod. All this is not to say that Fracken Universe is a bad mod, or mod pack overall, and many of the mods I named are compatible with it if only through separate patch mods. But that's the thing, FU doesn't exist in a vacuum, and it's no longer that one massive and essential overhaul mod. Really, that's the major point I think you should take away from this video. If you've never played Fracken Universe before, and you're interested in downloading it and giving it a try, by all means, go ahead. That's your call, not mine. If you think the drama, the baggage, and or the mod itself is too much, then you're free to enjoy other mods, or even pure vanilla, if that's your thing. At this point, I need to say this. If you enjoy Fracken Universe despite everything I've said in this video, keep enjoying it. I'm not here to tell you otherwise. No, I'm here to give my own thoughts and opinions regarding FU in general, and you're free to disagree with me on some or all of this. Because I know people will ask, despite all the drama, and despite all the problems, I'm surprisingly okay with keeping FU as part of my Starbound experience, and I don't hold a grudge against FU or any of its developers. I can acknowledge that FU has all these problems while keeping it installed. Like I said, I tend to play Starbound in a pseudo-creative mode. Things like the research system and the madness mechanic don't matter to me often. What matters to me are things like the races and the planets it adds, content that I find useful for stuff like story videos that I may or may not do more of. Which leads me to this. Starbound, at its core, is a sandbox game. You don't need to go through its story. You can create your own stories with your own characters proceeding through your own challenges, maybe with your friends and their characters, their stories in tow. However, even it and its developers, Chucklefish, have their own issues and controversies regarding things like stealing content, and I feel it would be hypocritical of me to not mention that here. 
My point with saying that is, just as I'll keep on using FU despite its controversies regarding its developers, I'll keep playing Starbound despite its controversies regarding its developers. Besides, Chucklefish has my money. I can't do much about that other than keep playing the game I bought. And I do still enjoy Starbound despite all its flaws and controversies. I'm getting off topic here, but there are other videos that explain Chucklefish's misdeeds in better detail than I ever could. At the end of the day, if I needed to sum up Fracken Universe in a few simple words, it has problems and baggage that will forever stick with it, resulting in this mixed bag of candy. You might not want to stand next to some of its contents, but the rest is perfectly fine. Edible, if nothing else, but not essential and not for everyone. And that's really about it. I know I either skimped over or didn't include things like Kevin, the Science Outpost, and Delta Freya. Like I mentioned, this was not meant to be an all-encompassing deep dive into Fracken Universe. It might have started out like that, but in the end, this is what I settled on. Still, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, I have plenty of other Starbound mod showcases on my channel, all collected in a playlist that I'll link at the end of this video. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon and Coffee. Links to those will be in the description. You don't have to, but every little bit helps me make more videos like this. Thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, and goodbye for now.